most traveled probe of all time returns. Voyager 1 announces that it's time to come home and it's approaching Earth. Are you one of those people who thought that the Voyager mission was currently on its way, further and further out of the solar system, and further and further to the Oort cloud? In many thousands of years, the Voyager probe twins, as ambassadors of our civilization, would perhaps reach foreign cultures for the first time. But now everything seems to be over as Voyager 1 sets course for Earth. In 1977, the most successful probe of all time set off on its journey together with its identical twin, Voyager 2. After exploring the solar system beyond Jupiter, NASA ventured a risky extension of the mission. The Voyagers were to be the first man-made object to fly beyond the boundaries of the solar system into open space. The risk of losing the probes along the way was great as they had to cross the Kuiper Belt, a region that is very dark and was virtually unknown at the time. Nobody knew what the probes would encounter there. Although nobody really expected the probes to take such a long time to fly, this option was somehow in the minds of the designers who built the probes from the very beginning. After all, both probes were equipped with a golden disk that was supposed to be a greeting message to alien worlds. Information about our planet, humanity, art, and culture is engraved on the ultra-durable disks in a similar way to a record. An intelligent culture should be able to play the disks in easily understandable sign language with the help of the enclosed operating instructions. Does Voyager's change of course now mean that our message will never get through? On August 25th, 2012, when Voyager 1 crossed the magic boundary of the heliosphere, it was about 17 billion kilometers or 120 astronomical units away from Earth. Anyone following the probe's distance to Earth closely could receive a confusing message shortly afterwards. Voyager 1 suddenly came closer to Earth again. What had happened? Did the probe simply turn around? Was there a defect? Or had something unnatural happened? Voyager 1 is returning home. We can reassure you that Voyager 1 will not be landing on Earth anytime soon or getting lost somewhere on its journey home. Strictly speaking, it will continue to fly as planned. Nevertheless, the probe periodically comes closer to Earth again. This phenomenon can be explained quite simply by the fascinating interplay of the orbits that Earth and Voyager 1 follow through the solar system. Every year, the gigantic distance between Voyager 1 and our home planet decreases by several million kilometers. The effect lasts for a few months. Then, Earth and Voyager move away again on their celestial orbits and the distance increases again astronomically speaking, without the two moving any faster. This fascinating convergence between Voyager and Earth occurs whenever Earth reaches a point in its faster orbit around the Sun that brings it closer to the orbit of Voyager 1. During this time, it appears as if the spacecraft is approaching us, although it's actually continuing on its path into deep space. To understand the magnitude of this phenomenon a little better, let's now look at the enormous distances between the two dance partners. In November 2023, Voyager 1 was around 23 billion kilometers away from Earth. The Earth is moving around the Sun at a speed of around 107,826 kilometers per hour, while Voyager 1 is gliding through space at a speed of around 61,500 kilometers per hour. These different speeds mean that during certain months of the year, the Earth moves towards the orbit of Voyager 1 faster than the probe can move away from us. These are exactly the months when the distance between Earth and Voyager 1 temporarily decreases before increasing again as Earth continues its orbit. So, although Voyager 1 is not actually on its way back to Earth, the example of this annual approach gives us a whole new perspective on the movements and incredible size of our solar system. So the ambassador of humanity continues its flight. Never before seen images. It was a fantastic moment in space exploration when Voyager 1 reached Jupiter in March 1979. A completely new dimension opened up before the eyes of astronomers and NASA officials during these important moments. The probe approached the majestic gas giant at a speed of around 16 kilometers per second after only 2.5 years of flight. Can you imagine how the observers felt as what was initially a small speck became an ever-growing planet? Finally, Jupiter shone in front of Voyager's camera in all its splendor. In the days that followed, the probe made a whole series of groundbreaking discoveries that changed our understanding of Jupiter and its moons forever. 
Back in March 1979, when Voyager 1 was still on its way to Jupiter, the probe passed the small inner moon of Jupiter, Almathea, at a distance of around 421,000 kilometers, taking the first close-up photo of this satellite. Amalthea appeared as an elongated, reddish body and did not really look like a moon at first glance. At a distance of around 280,000 kilometers, Voyager 1 photographed the first cloud surfaces of Jupiter. This first approach enabled the probe to collect detailed images and data of Jupiter's atmosphere, rings, and moons. One of the most sensational discoveries was the observation of active volcanoes on the moon Io, the first time volcanic activity outside the Earth had ever been directly observed. This discovery raised completely new questions about geological processes on other celestial bodies. Today, we even know that Io is the most geologically active body in the entire solar system. Voyager 1 was the first probe to see Jupiter's fine ring system. This was a huge surprise for the large community of planetary researchers. At the time, no one had expected Jupiter to have rings. Throughout the mission, Voyager investigated the planet's complex and dynamic atmosphere and took a close look at the Great Red One. Voyager 1's Jupiter mission was not only a series of scientific firsts, but also a short-term surprise. By chance, a NASA technician discovered an extremely favorable constellation of outer planets, enabling Voyager 1 to fly to the gas giant Jupiter in just 2.5 years. The whole mission was a stroke of luck. It's a bit as if someone had shouted, hey, there's a tunnel, and we could get to Jupiter faster than ever before. Let's build a probe quickly, and while we're at it, the probe could also stop by Saturn, and who knows, it might even go further. Voyager 1 and 2 were built in record time, using the simplest of methods and sent off quickly. At the time, nobody could have imagined that they would become such a success story. In November 1980, Voyager 1 reached Saturn, the second largest planet in our solar system. Here too, the probe delivered breathtaking images of Saturn's rings and discovered several new moons. One of the most spectacular finds were the images of the fine structure in the rings, which consist of countless small ring particles. Voyager's observations of Saturn's largest moon, Titan, laid the foundations for the first probe to land on a distant moon. The Huygens mission was only launched because Voyager showed us in the 1980s that Saturn's moon, Titan, had a dense atmosphere and was possibly Earth-like. Which is better, Voyager 1 or Voyager 2? Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are siblings in the truest sense of the word. Both probes are exactly the same and were launched just a few weeks apart in 1977, Voyager 2 on August 20th and Voyager 1 on September 5th. Despite their joint launch and similar missions, their trajectories and discoveries are completely different. Voyager 2, which actually launched before Voyager 1, took a longer but more scientifically productive route. It flew past all four outer gas giants, passing Jupiter in 1979, Saturn in 1981, Uranus in 1986, and Neptune in 1989. Voyager 2 was the very first probe ever to deliver data from Uranus and Neptune. The flybys not only brought us photos of planets never seen before, but also data on the complex atmospheres and diverse moons of these distant worlds. Of particular note was the discovery of 10 new moons and two new rings around Uranus, as well as the first detailed study of the bizarre dark spots, an unusually active surface of Neptune. Voyager 1, on the other hand, took a faster route and reached Jupiter slightly ahead of Voyager 2, steering the probe directly through the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The undertaking was dangerous, but in the 1970s, scientists needed to know whether this route was theoretically possible. Voyager 1 survived the transit with flying colors, and the unusual route finally allowed a close flyby of Saturn's moon Titan. However, this destination and route also meant that Voyager 1 would not visit any other planets, but Voyager 2 was guided on a different orbit and visited the outer planets. Both probes carried identical instruments to measure magnetic fields, solar wind particles, and cosmic rays, as well as cameras and other sensors to collect images and data of the planets and their moons. Voyager 2 gave us unique insights into the worlds of Uranus and Neptune that would have remained unknown without this mission. Its data has changed our image of the blue ice giants and shown how diverse the planets of our solar system really are. After the end of the official mission, it was clear that the two Voyagers would be the first probes to fly into interstellar space, and that is where they are today. 
Voyager 1 crossed this boundary in 2012, and Voyager 2 followed about three years later. Since then, the two probes, which are more than 45 years old, have once again been pioneers in space exploration. Both provided us with the very first measurement data from the space between the solar systems, where no probe had ever been before. Where are they going? Since reaching interstellar space, Voyager 1 has continued on its course towards the constellation of Ophiuchus. If the probe stays on its current course, it will encounter one of our nearest stellar neighbors in about 40,000 years. The star Gliese 445 is currently about 17.6 light years away from Earth. In around 296,000 years, Voyager 2 will pass the star Ross 248 in the constellation Pavo. This star, which is about 10.3 light years from Earth, is a red dwarf star. Subscribe to the channel now. There will be many more exciting videos about space.